Daf Yomi, 63b, top of the page. And it was the middle of the thought said by uh, Rabbi Chia or Abba saying in the name of Yochanan on the bottom of 63a, uh, a, with regard to one who falsely states the claim that a thief stole, 63b now, a lost item that he had found, which he had been obligated to safeguard until it could be re- returned to its owner, he pays double payment, as it is stated, for any manner of lost thing about, uh, about which one shall say, that is, the one whom, whom the judges convict shall pay double to his neighbor, Exodus 22.8. <clears throat> we learned in Mishnah elsewhere, in 108b, about a case where an owner of an item said to the bailey, where is my deposit? The bailey said to him, it was lost. The owner said, I administer an oath <clears throat> to you <clears throat> that it was actually lost. And the bailey said, Amen thereby accepting the oath. And subsequently, the witness testify, the witnesses testify about the bailey that he himself consumed the deposit. In this case, the bailey pays the principal, that is the value of the deposit, to the owner. If the bailey admitted on his own that he stole the deposit before any witnesses testified to this effect, he pays the principal, and an additional one-fifth of the principal <clears throat> amount to the owner, and he brings a guilt offering to atone for his sin. See Leviticus 5.20-26. 20 <clears throat> the Mishnah continues with another case. The owner said to the bailey, Where is my deposit? The bailey said to him, It was stolen. The owner said, I administer an oath to you. And the bailey said, Amen. And the owner and the witnesses testify about the bailey that he stole the deposit. In this case, the bailey pays double payment. If he admitted to theft on his own, he pays the principal and an additional one fifth to the owner, and he brings the guilt offering to atone for sin. The Gemara says, in any event, the Mishnah teaches that in the case of a bailey who falsely states the claim, that a thief stole the deposit, he pays double payment. But in the case of a bailey who falsely claimed that a deposit was lost, he does not pay double payment. And it also teaches that even with regard to one who falsely states the claim that a thief stole the deposit, it's only by taking an oath to substantiate his claim that he pays double payment. But for simply lying without taking an oath, he does not pay double payment. From where are these from where are these matters derived? As the sages taught in a Brita. The Torah states if a man gives his neighbor money or vessels to safeguard it was stolen from the house of the man, if the thief shall be found he shall pay double, Exodus 22.6. The verse is speaking of a bailey who falsely states the claim that a thief stole. The bride continues, Do you say that the verse is speaking about one who falsely claims that a deposit was stolen, or is it speaking about the thief himself, reaching, teaching that if the actual thief is caught, he must pay double, make a double payment. When the Torah says, in the following verse, if the thief shall not be found, the one whom the judges convict shall pay double to his neighbor, Exodus 22, 7 and 8. The verse is speaking of one who falsely states the claim that a thief stole the deposit, as it states that no other thief was found. Since the latter verse is speaking of one who falsely claims that a deposit was stolen, it stands to reason that the earlier verse is speaking of this case as well. It was taught in another Braita when the Torah states, If the thief shall be found, he shall pay double. Exodus 22.6, the verse is speaking of the thief himself. <clears throat> Do you say that it is speaking about the thief himself, or is it speaking only about the one, about one who falsely states the claim that a thief stole? If so, when the verse then state, says, 
if the thief shall not be found, the one whom the judges convict shall pay double to his neighbor. Exodus 22.7, the case of one who falsely states the claim. That a thief stole the deposit is already stated. How then do I realize the first verse without paying double? If the thief shall be found, so that is that it not be superfluous, it must be that the first verse is speaking about the speaking of the thief himself. Okay, let's see where we're holding on time. Oh, we have plenty of time. Okay, continuing on now. Thief himself. Where were we? Okay. The Gemara comments, although the two bright tote disagree about the meaning of the earlier verse, in any event, everyone agrees that the latter verse, which states, if the thief be not found, im lo yimatse haganav, shall pay double to his neighbor, is referring to a bailey who falsely states the claim that a thief stole a deposit. From where is this interpretation inferred from that verse? From the verse, Rava said, the verse should be understood as follows: If it is not found, im lo yimatse, to be, as he said, that is, if the his claim that the deposit was stolen is found to be untrue, but he himself stole it, he shall pay double to his neighbor. Uminalan and the Gemara turns its attention to another facet of the halacha. And where do we know minalan? Where do we know mem nun lamid nun? Okay. Well, where do we know? Do you derive that this <coughs> double payment of one who falsely claims that the deposit was stolen applies only when the bailey was taken? has taken an oath that it was stolen. The Gemara answers, it is taught in Brighta with regard to the verse, if the thief shall not be found, the homeowner shall approach the judges to determine if he laid his hand, shalach yado, on his neighbor's goods, Exodus 22.7. This means that he shall come to court for the purpose of taking an oath. Do you say he comes to court for the purpose of taking an oath or is it only for the purpose of facing judgment? <coughs> the meaning may be determined by means of a verbal analogy. Laying the hand, referring to misappropriation, is stated later in the verse, the oath of the Lord shall be between them both to see whether he has not laid or has not, with we'll whether he has not laid his hand on his neighbor's goods. Exodus 22. 22.10. And laying the hand is stated above. That is, Exodus 22.7. Just as laying the hand later is referring explicitly to an oath, so too laying the hand here is referring to an oath. The more analyzes the two bright totes that earlier granted, according to the one who says in the second bright of that one verse about double payment is speaking about the thief, and one verse is speaking about a bailey who falsely states the claim that a thief stole the deposit. This is why the two verses are written. Each verse teaches a different halacha, but according to the one who says in the first Brita that both of the verses are speaking about a bailey who falsely states the claim that a thief stole the deposit, why do I need two verses? One verse should be sufficient. The sages say both are necessary because one verse serves to exclude from double payment the case of one who falsely states the claim that the item has been lost. Double payment is paid only when the bailey falsely claims that the item under his care was stolen. The Gemara asks, and according to the one who says that one verse is speaking about the thief and one verse is speaking about a bailey who falsely states the claim that a thief sold a deposit so that there is no superfluous verse from where does he learn to exclude from double payment a bailey who falsely states the claim that the item has been lost the Gore answered he derives it from the fact that 
the verse could have stated if a thief shall not be found but it states if the thief shall not be found if a thief shall not be found. I don't see the difference if a, a thief shall not be found if the thief that's what it is it's the thief Haganah it doesn't just say thief it says the thief okay I got you now okay the Gemara asks and since according to the one who says that both verses are speaking about a Bailey who falsely states the claim that a thief stole the deposit one of the verses excludes the case of a Bailey who falsely claims that, that the deposit was lost what does he derive from the fact that the verse did not state a thief if a thief shall not be found but it states and said the thief shall not be found the Gemara answers he could have said to you that this terminology is necessary to teach what Rabbi Chibra Abba says, that Rabbi Yochanan says, as Rabbi Chibra Abba says, that Rabbi Yochanan says, one who falsely states the claim that a thief stole the deposit pays double payment. And if the deposit was an ox or sheep, and he slaughtered or sold it, he pays fourfold or fivefold payment. The Gemara notes, according to the one who says that the one that one verse is speaking about a thief, and one verse is speaking about a bailey who falsely states the claim that a thief stole the deposit, who employed this change in terminology, that is, the fact that the verse could have stated if a thief shall not be found, but instead it, it, it states if the thief shall not be found, to exclude the case of the bailey who falsely states the claim that the deposit was lost, there seems to be no source to teach the halacha stated by Rabbi Chia Barabba. Accordingly, from where does he derive the halacha taught by Rabbi Chia Barabba, that if the bailey slaughtered or sold the animal, he pays a fourfold or fivefold payment? The Gemara answers, he could have said to you, it is a juxtaposition, a liability for double payment for a thief and for a bailey who falsely claims that the deposit was stolen are juxtaposed to each other. Therefore, just as a thief pays fourfold or fivefold payment, if he slaughtered or sold the animal, he must so he must pay the bailey. And although these two cases are not entirely comparable, this derivation cannot be refuted on that basis, as there is a principle that one cannot refute a derivation based on a juxtaposition by drawing distinctions between the two juxtaposed cases. The Gemara asks further, granted, according to the one who says that one verse is speaking about the thief and one verse is speaking about a bailey who falsely states the claim that a thief stole the deposit as well, but according to the one who says that both verses are speaking about a bailey who falsely states the claim that a thief stole the deposit, from where does he derive that a thief himself must pay double payment for stealing? And if you will say, let it be derived from a, from a Kavachomer inference from a case of the Bailey who falsely states the claim that a thief stole the deposit because of one obligated to pay double payment for falsely claiming that a deposit was stolen, which constitutes passive theft. All the more so a thief must himself pay double payment. This derivation is not possible. The reason is that it is sufficient for the conclusion that emerges from an effort or inference to be like its source. In other words, the Alakha derived by means of an affortuary influence cannot be more stringent than the halacha of the source from which it is derived. It's kind of like Dio. Dio, yeah, Consequently, on the basis of this affortuary inference, it would have been concluded that just there, in this source case, the double payment is required. Only when the guilty party took an oath, so to hear, when the thief himself pays double, it is only when he took an oath that he did not steal it. The Gemara responds, he derives the obligation of a thief to pay double payment without having taken an oath from a third verse. And it looks like we're running out of time, so we'll have to do it. Just a tiny part B, I guess. We're up to 15.